YouTube and welcome to my channel. My name is Stephanie Chias and I am a pro wrestling interviewer and journalist. And this is my first YouTube video and I have been wanting to make YouTube videos and talk about wrestling on YouTube for such a long time. So I am really excited to finally be doing it and getting out there and getting to talk to you all about the weird and wonderful world of pro wrestling. And for my first video, I thought the best way to introduce myself to all of you would be to tell you the story of how I became a wrestling fan. I have been a wrestling fan for a really, really long time, like way longer than I want to admit. And I actually can't even really remember a time when wrestling wasn't a part of my life. But I also can't remember the very first time I ever saw wrestling. All I know is on Saturday mornings, early afternoons, I used to be ready, getting ready to go into town with my mom and I would see wrestling on TV. Now, I'm pretty sure looking back that this was ITV, maybe WCW, maybe World of Sport. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know who anyone was, and I would literally just catch like little glimpses of it, like watch it for a minute and then have to leave. But I was completely, completely fascinated by it, and I just wanted to know more about what what this was but really how I got into wrestling was so I have a younger brother and my younger brother loved watching cartoons he would watch cartoons all day and I was never a fan of cartoons growing up and he loved Cartoon Network so he'd be watching like Dexter's Laboratory, Cow and Chicken, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> And my brother, every time I would ask him, could I watch something? He would say, are there real people in it? And I'd say yes. And he'd say no, like no real people, just cartoons. So one Friday night, it was time for him to go to bed. And I was left in the living room, finally had the TV all to myself. And it was time to watch some real people, not cartoons. And I don't know what happened. Maybe I couldn't find the remote or something but the channel was still on Cartoon Network and all of a sudden Cartoon Network ended and it changed into TNT. And on came WCW Monday Nitro on a Friday night. And I was just like, wow, this is wrestling. This is a thing I have been wanting to watch. And I sat down and I watched Nitro for the first time. And I loved it and in particular I loved Randy Savage. The moment I saw Randy Savage on TV for the first time I'm pretty sure my pupils turned into little hard eyes because I was completely transfixed by him. To me Randy Savage was the most wonderful, colorful, charismatic, cutest man I had ever seen in my whole life and Little girl me was in love. And I had all these like funny ideas about who Randy Savage was. Like for some reason, I thought Randy Savage was the height that I am now, which is five foot one. I thought he was so little and so cute and compact compared to Hulk Hogan or the Giant or Lex Luger or Kevin Nash. And I not only loved Randy, but I loved Miss Elizabeth. Miss Elizabeth was everything I wanted to be when I was a little girl. She was so beautiful. She had such beautiful clothes and she had just such grace and poise. And bear in mind, I had not seen any stuff from the 80s at this point. I had not seen uh, everything they did in the 80s in WWF. I had not seen their SummerSlam wedding. I just knew them as this broken up couple with some history that were figuring it out on Monday Night Show. Like I always remember Miss Elizabeth sitting on a swing talk talking to Randy uh, when she went off with Ric Flair. Um, 
but I just loved both of them so much. That WCW period is like just so close to my heart and I would sit every Friday night with a bottle of Diet Coke, a mint arrow, and a small sour cream and chive <laughs> tub of Pringles and I would just be in heaven watching WCW. So at this time, I didn't know anyone else that liked wrestling. It was no one in my family liked wrestling. No one I was friends with at school liked wrestling. I would try and talk to the girls in my class about wrestling. They absolutely did not want to know anything about wrestling. But there were some boys in my school that I knew liked wrestling, but they didn't like WCW. They liked WWF. So from very early on, I knew that WCW was not the only wrestling, that there was this other company that was on Sky Sports. And I remember there was a boy in my class that wore an Undertaker t-shirt for PE once. And I don't know how I even knew that The Undertaker was a wrestler, but I just thought, hmm, he looks interesting. And then the same boy, he had a annual of WWF and he lent it to me and I was, I would flick through everyone and I came to The Undertaker and I was scared. I was definitely scared of The Undertaker, but I was also extremely intrigued by him. I wanted to know more. And I would, I mean, I I try to talk to these boys about wrestling, but very young boys, they don't really want to be friends with girls. And I realized that pretty quickly. <laughs> I have a very distinct memory of boys in my class playing wrestling in the playground and they were doing all these different moves on each other and people were shouting like choke slam tombstone and I was trying to get involved and I said jackknife power bomb and one boy turned around to me and said who's jackknife and it was awkward yeah so I knew that WWF was on Sky Sports so one night uh, while I was watching Nitro, I thought I'll flick the channel and see what the competition's like. So I turned over to Sky Sports and I'm not exactly sure who or what I saw, but I think it was during the time that Kian was brought in as The Undertaker's brother, but I saw something to do with fire that scared me so much. I think someone got fire thrown in their face or in their eyes. It might've been gold dust or mankind. And I just was totally freaked out. Like I had nightmares about this and I just thought this WWF stuff, it's, this is not for me. <laughs> but then in 1998, my life completely changed uh, in, January of 1998, my father died. Obviously it was a very defining moment in my life, um, very life-changing experience. And, you know, it's certainly not something that I'm gonna go into in this video talk, and talk about in detail, anything like that. But it really, also had a big influence on my wrestling fandom because a month or two after that happened I switched the channel over to Raw again and this time I saw The Undertaker and all of a sudden I wasn't scared anymore. Something inside me totally changed and I went from being someone who was scared of The Undertaker to this is my new favorite wrestler, like this this is my new favorite person. And I became the biggest Undertaker fan. And when I say that I was a huge Undertaker fan and The Undertaker changed my life, I'm not exaggerating in the least part. I saw The Undertaker and I, his whole character, his, his whole persona, the way he looked, I just thought he was the coolest person ever. 
and somehow I was somehow I knew what a goth was and to me he was the absolute king of the goths and at that point I went from being like a very girly kind of bright and colorful um young girl into being a full on goth teenager and I felt I fell completely in love with 80s goth music and I was also a really big fan of Marilyn Manson as well and I thought The Undertaker would be totally totally a Marilyn Manson fan as well like look at him of course he is so The Undertaker had a huge influence in who I who I became as a teenager and, and who I still am now with like the, the music I like and a lot of the style I like. And then imagine how, how heartbroken I was when The Undertaker transformed himself into the American badass and I and the rest of the world found out that he was actually someone who listened to Kid Rock and Limp Bizkit. No way. Now, I think we can all agree now that Rolling is, is pretty much an iconic entrance theme, but at the same time, like, at that point, it, it was heartbreaking for me to realise who the man behind The Undertaker Mask was. You know, I've forgiven him now, and he, he ditched the American Badass thing. He ditched it eventually, but at the time, I was just like no that's that's not what the undertaker was to me and recently i've been watching a lot of these 1998 pay-per-views and they really really take me back to that place in time and it's so weird because 1998 was maybe the worst year of my life but 1998 was in my opinion the best year for wrestling I don't think I'll ever be as in love with something or as invested in something as I was in WWF in 1998. Like it was everything to me. I remember specifically in that time being very scared that wrestling would be taken away from me because, you know, ever since I started watching wrestling, I was told that I shouldn't be watching wrestling um, by different people in my family, um, like friends that I tried to tell about, about wrestling. It was like, why why are you watching wrestling? You shouldn't be watching wrestling. Wrestling's not for you. Wrestling's not for girls. Wrestling, it's stupid. It's just, why, why do you watch this stuff? You shouldn't be watching this stuff. And when it got to that period in 1998, I just was really scared that it would be taken away from me and added on top of that this was the attitude era and the attitude era was not actually suitable for children and if you go back and you watch it really really wasn't suitable for children at all and I'm not sure sometimes how I got away with watching it but I have a very distinct memory of one Friday night my granny was babysitting me and I was watching Raw and this new Attitude Era advert came on and it was all different superstars walking around Titan Towers um, saying different things about WWF and Sable had a line We never use sex to enhance our image yeah. and I remember just thinking oh my god they said sex and I'm watching this with my granny and she might tell my mum that I'm watching something where they say sex and I'm not going to be allowed to watch it anymore. And I was terrified. I was terrified that night that that would be the end of wrestling for me. And luckily it wasn't. I had a huge collection of uh, WWF VHSs and two that I distinctly remember getting were King of the Ring 1998 and a video about DX. And I had wanted these videos for ages, but King of the Ring 1998 was in rated 18. And I was nowhere near 18 at the time. And the DX video wasn't rated 18, but on the cover, Shawn Michaels was completely naked 
except for a title belt. So I knew that was probably not something I should be watching. But uh, one day I was with my mum and I, I think I'd done really well in an exam or something. And I was allowed to pick some presents. And what I picked was King of the Ring 1998 and the DX video. And I just figured like, you know, she's in such a good mood with me right now that she's not going to say like, you can't have this video that's an 18. And I remember asking her, would she get them for me? And her saying like, why is this in the 18? And I said, you know, it's because they're wrestling and people think that's violent. Um, obviously not mentioning Mick Foley being thrown from the top of a hell in a cell. Now, if I had to choose my favorite wrestler of all time, I would choose Shawn Michaels. And Shawn was not part of WWE when I started watching. I started watching just after WrestleMania 14, so he was gone but he would be mentioned and he would sometimes come back. He, I remember he came back for commentary once. I remember he came back one time and he was in this like really nice black coat, like woolen coat and he was in gloves and he got locked out of the arena and he was attacked in the snow. And it was, <laughs> I was so heartbroken watching it because my experience of Shawn Michaels as someone that wasn't watching in like 1996 or 1997 was like, this is this like almost angelic figure. This poor guy who was such a great wrestler had a terrible injury happen to him and now he can't wrestle anymore. And he had all my sympathy. And anytime I saw a video of Sean or there was some reference to Sean I was immediately intrigued so I started collecting um any videos I could find with Sean Michaels in them like Wrestlemania 12 that was a big one for me I I mean some people don't like that Iron Man match I love that Iron Man match especially for the ending when Sean wins that belt and he's holding it with tears in his eyes I was at home watching that crying as well. Obviously, I liked Steve Austin, I liked The Rock, um, Chris Jericho. I feel like Chris Jericho has been a part of my entire life. So I've never really had um, a big period where I've stopped watching wrestling. I know some people fall out of it. That's never happened to me. There's been times that I've been more invested in it than other times, I think, Probably the time I was at university was the time I was least invested in it. But um, any time that I had kind of lost a bit of interest in it, if I was ever having a, a bad time or a difficult time, it would be the thing I would go back to, to focus on. Like wrestling was always there for me. I always wanted to be involved in wrestling. There was a time... Um, when I wanted to be a wrestler and I did a bit of training and it turns out that I'm not coordinated at all so <laughs> that just just didn't work out for me but then I've always loved to write and I've loved to talk so writing and talking about wrestling became the perfect thing for me to dedicate my life to and there is nothing I want to do more than talk about wrestling, promote wrestling, let people know what wrestling really is. Because um, a lot of people, they don't understand pro wrestling. They don't understand what an art it is. And I love to be able to tell people like, you know, what whatever you think wrestling is, if it isn't, it's so much more than that. And just kind of <laughs> spread joy through wrestling because wrestling has given me so much joy. So I wanted to end on just saying, you know, I've spoken in this video about how when I first started watching wrestling and through my childhood and teen years, I did not have very much support as a wrestling fan. Um, I didn't have other friends that were wrestling. People didn't like me watching wrestling. Um, and I always felt very ostracized because of it and, and very alone in my love for wrestling and I think 
a lot of that was because I was a girl and people just didn't think that wrestling was something that a girl should like. Nowadays people are a lot more open-minded and they're a lot more willing to accept people others just being into whatever whatever they want but if you're a young girl or a young boy out there who might be watching who might like something or be interested in something that other people tell you you shouldn't like or you're stupid for liking or isn't for you to like you need to just ignore them like do not listen to anyone telling you what you should love and what you should feel passionate about because we can't choose what we love and some of us love wrestling <laughs> and for me you know if i had listened to any of those people i wouldn't be where i am now the older i've gotten the more wrestling has given me because now it's given me a job a career it's given me so many friends and there's so much stuff I wouldn't have if it wasn't for rest. And I know that the little girl I've been telling you about that sat and watched Nitro with her Pringles and her Diet Coke and her Mint Arrow would be so happy to know that I am still a wrestling fan and that I am, you know, working in wrestling and that I've got to do so many amazing things involved in wrestling that I'm going to tell you about in future videos. So you can be a strange little girl that loves Randy Savage that turns into a freaky goth teenager that loves The Undertaker. You can be whatever you want to be and you can follow that dream all the way to being an adult <laughs> sitting, <laughs> sitting in her home beside a women's title that she never won and a stuffed macho man doll who just loves wrestling as much as she did when she was a kid. So thank you so much for watching this video. I'm so glad that I'm able to put this out there. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel because there's so much more to come. And you can follow me on Twitter at Stephanie M. Chase and on Instagram at Stephanie M. Chase. And you can always check out my website, www.stephaniechase.co.uk, where I put up all my wrestling interviews. There's everyone from Jay White to Triple H, Charlotte Flair, the Bella Twins up there. So please um, check it out. And once again, thank you so much for listening to my story.